Some of you may have noticed that for the past few years, Britain has been invaded by the Italians, the Germans, the Japanese, and the French. Now we have the means to fight back. The new Austin Metro. The new Metro is so aerodynamic that at a steady 50 miles per hour, the Metro HLE gets 62 miles per gallon. The new Metro has a split-action rear seat to let you choose between more space or more seats. And to help send the invaders back where they came from, the new Austin Metro goes 12,000 miles or one full year between services. The new Austin Metro. A British car to beat the world. This is no ordinary vehicle. As well as being a brilliant new concept in automotive ingenuity, this new car is also a symbol for the people who designed it and the engineers who developed it, for the workers who make it and the dealers who will sell it, for the company who believed in it and nursed it through to completion. The fact that this car exists at all is a credit to the dedication, the loyalty, the tenacity, and above all, the faith of all of them. Even if that were the only reason, Metro is a very special car. Austin Morris already had a highly successful small car, the legendary Mini. Although it was competing against a new generation of super minis from other manufacturers, bigger cars that offered hatchback versatility, none of them had ever managed to match the brilliance of Mini's original concept. Unlike other manufacturers who were committed to new model projects conceived before the oil crisis, Austin Morris could approach their new small car in the light of world events. The Advanced Engineering Department at Longbridge birthplace of many successful vehicles, including Mini itself. The brief for the new car, codenamed 8088, was simple enough. Design a high-quality vehicle that preserved the best of Mini's features, but add more versatile interior space and more refinement to outclass the benefits offered by other Super Mini hatchbacks. That's right, yes. We've got a good fuel tank capacity for the car. The engineer's skills in creating the maximum usable interior space within compact exterior dimensions had already earned them an outstanding reputation with the rest of the world's motor industry. And true to form, they came up with a spectacular layout package. And calibration of the gauge, but we have a skin. It needs a little bit more roundness in the body side. The new car was always planned to be about the same size as the Mini it was intended to replace. A concept that proved to be a real challenge for the company's body stylists. Yeah, that, that's looking better. Yeah, that looks yeah. fine. I think the back could do with a little bit more roundness in it. The eventual body style that developed was extremely neat, highly functional and highly individual. An important factor when most small cars were beginning to look pretty similar. We must start on the 1st of October. From the very beginning, there was a clear agreement that the new car would have to be a quality vehicle. And a quality car needs quality manufacturing facilities. Plans were put in hand to turn Longbridge into the most up-to-date and quality-orientated car plant of its kind in Europe. Another early decision was not to develop a completely new power unit for the car. After exhaustive performance and economy tests, where the company's own engines were assessed against the competition, the engineers had still found that the A-series was potentially the best unit. There were several important advantages. 
the A-Series was simple, basically reliable and very compact, leaving more space for the passenger cell. But what really counted was that the oil crisis had revived the potential economy with performance of long-stroke engines. The engineers believed that by completely redesigning the unit from top to bottom and by incorporating the latest components and manufacturing techniques, they could create a new engine every bit as good as the competition. The objective? Maximum performance, maximum reliability, maximum quality, and minimum fuel consumption. 1975, and the first prototypes began to appear on secret tracks all over Europe. For two years until 1977, the development engineers had an equally simple brief, to make ADO 88 the most thoroughly tested car of its kind in the world. ADO 88 was a minor miracle in personal transport. Incredibly spacious for its size, outstanding in performance, road holding, maneuverability. But the company's forward planning experts had recognized a new need for a small family car in addition to Mini for the 80s and beyond. With its huge interior, ADO 88 was already a long way toward meeting that need. There was only one sensible decision to take. Retain the best-selling Mini as a personal small car and redesign ADO 88 to cater for the family owner. And so, ADO 88 was changed. I, I think these radios and the, the softness is coming along a tree. The designers began again. By making the car slightly larger, Metro, as eventually it would be christened, could provide substantially more passenger space than any of its competitors, some of which were nearly two feet longer. It also gave the stylists a chance to develop their ideas still further. Working round the clock in shifts, they managed to rescheme the new body shape far quicker than anyone could have imagined. Brian, I don't know what there is about this line, but it doesn't look quite right. I, is it it's to... doubtful whether any other car maker could have implemented such a major decision in so short a time. But enthusiasm began to grow as people realized that this time they were onto something really special. It's very smooth right the way through. So what I suggest you do is take four or five points down here. Well done. Right, let's have a look at what we've got. Shall we deal with exterior detail first and then come on to yeah. the... And the optimism was justified. Metro had become something of a revolutionary concept in car design. The very first Ultra Mini. A small, fuel-conscious vehicle with such a massive interior that it could be genuinely called a true family car. The car has a lot more cuteness now than it didn't have before. I see you're using the existing service tool, Dave. Any problems with that? No, in fact, it's identical. Metro was also planned to keep the eventual cost of ownership to an absolute minimum. 12,000 mile servicing had been a target set in the earliest days, and the service department recommended many modifications and special components which were incorporated in the design program. Quite easily removable. Even before the styling of the new car was finally approved, the detailed structural design work had begun at pressed steel fissure. The body's perfect master model, handmade by PSF's own craftsmen, was minutely measured to provide all the information required. Modern technology that completes in hours a job that used to take weeks. As pioneers of computer-aided design techniques in body manufacture, PSF had a dozen years of experience and the sophisticated software programs to rapidly analyze the potential weight, strength, and stiffness of the new body shell. Every curve and contour of every panel eventually reduced to holes in a punched tape to guide the die-cutting machines. Die-making. The objective, simply perfection. A massively expensive process that, in spite of the most modern techniques, still depends in the end on a craftsman's skills for a flawless finish.